Welcome to SVG TV News for Thursday, February 18, 2016. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. A well-regulated cooperative sector is in the best interest of all stakeholders. So says President of the SVG Cooperative League, Kelvin Pompey, as his organization in conjunction with the Caribbean Confederation of Credit Unions held a national legislative workshop today at French's house. At the workshop, credit union boards of directors, committees, and management teams were presented with the main changes in the laws and regulations that govern their institution. Speaking at the opening ceremony, the Cooperative League president pointed out some of the advantages the new regulations bring, which include the transparency and protection of investments. The harmonized legislative framework that is now enforced throughout the OCS is designed to achieve enhanced supervision, regulation, and prudential operations of the credit union sector. Among the changes in the legislation for credit unions are provisions that emphasize stronger board oversight functions, heightened capital adequacy standards, improved investor protection, and enhanced disclosure and transparency requirements. The credit union movement welcomes the involvement of the ECCB, the FSA, and other regulatory bodies as critical partners and shareholders in the growth and development of this sector. We also welcome new regulations and systems since a well-regulated cooperative sector is in the best interest of all stakeholders. Minister of National Mobilization, who also has responsibility for cooperative affairs, Frederick Stevenson, says the cooperative sector continues to make major contributions to the development of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He made mention of the school's thrift program, of which most primary, secondary, and even preschoolers are involved, in which they are taught at an early age the fundamental principle of saving. Stevenson encouraged the cooperatives to use the workshop as a learning experience. Today, you are here to learn and to put what you learn into practice. It is important that we, we continue to offer the education to all our people. So when you go back to your credit unions, you would advise your membership and someone would take the message down the road so that everybody can be informed. And it is also important that we encourage other persons who are not members of a credit union to join one. Speaking of his government's Zero Hunger Initiative, Stevenson used the opportunity to call on all cooperatives to partner with his government to ensure that the elimination of hunger in SVG is achieved. I want to challenge the, the credit union movement in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to join the government in this regard. So some of your programs, they, this is not the, the forum for this, but I think it is important for me to speak about it. <laughs> that you have to, in your credit unions, offer incentives to the poor and the, the needy. They are members of society who needs our help as well. The importance of washing hands and washing them properly was emphasized at a symposium held last evening at the Blue Lagoon on hand hygiene. Under the theme Clean Hands or Healing Hands, Director of the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, and World Health Organization, the WHO, Dr. Carissa Ethian, says that infections can be prevented and lives saved if medical practitioners do more to ensure that their hands are properly washed. Dr. Etienne, who is here conducting a site visit and hosting the PAHO sub-regional managers meeting, noted that infections associated with unwashed hands cost the medical sector millions, human suffering and even death, and called for an intensifying of hygienic best practices. This is very basic. Whether you are from a poor country or a rich one, you can wash your hands. So, um, and and it, is, it is also clear that healthcare associated infection outbreaks, including some caused by multi-drug resistant microorganisms, have been reported in the Caribbean. So it, it, we need to intensify 
hand hygiene practices if we are to control these outbreaks and if we are to ensure the quality of care that we, that we see. In Latin America, from 10 to 30 percent of the operational cost of intensive care units is spent to treat healthcare associated infections which are largely preventable. This represents a waste of resources, but also it represents significant suffering for our patients. The PAHO WHO director says that drug resistant microorganisms seem to be on the rise and effective hand washing is a good way of reducing infections. 2015, WHO celebrated 10 years of hand hygiene campaigns that was aimed to encourage healthcare workers to decrease the burden of healthcare that were associated with infections. Believe it or not, the simple measure of hand hygiene is one of the most effective, yet simple and cost effective means for reducing the transmission of infections, including infections that are caused by multi-drug resistant microorganisms. You know that this is, this is a major challenge that we face and nosocomial infections are very often um, um, drug resistant and um, with the whole era of antimicrobial resistance we are seeing more and more that as, 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 as a world we must confront infections for which there, there are no um, sensitive uh, or effective antibiotics. Calling for a cultural change through safer standard of care, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, Louis Deschamps, said bacterial infections in hospitals and other healthcare facilities can be prevented if proper hand hygiene is practiced. He also encouraged medical practitioners to decrease the burden on the health sector associated with infections. It is indeed a disgrace, though, that people never survive the infections which they accidentally catch while being cared for in hospitals. The focus is usually on other things. We therefore have to urgently re-educate people about hospital experience. When people enter a hospital, they enter a completely different environment than the one which exists outside of the entry doors. Our patients must therefore be made as aware and as proactive as possible and our caregivers must become vigilant in technique and procedure so that we may all experience healthy, acceptable medical outcomes which we can be sure of receiving and proud of administering. Additionally, Head of Infectious Diseases in Barbados, Dr. Corey Ford, called for a more collaborative effort throughout the Caribbean to combat infectious diseases caused by improper hand hygiene. Infection prevention and control in the Caribbean is something that has grown over the last couple of years. And I would say with our friends from PAHO that they have lent tremendous support in that area. And I think the ultimate aim for us in the region is for regional integration in the area of infection prevention and control. And it's not only a goal, it must become a reality. It must be a movement throughout the region. It's the most important method by which we will stop the transmission of organisms. We have lots of fancy machines, we have lots of fancy devices, we have fantastic laboratories, but at the end of the day, if we don't get this particular aspect right, everything else is going to fall apart. The Venezuelan Embassy commemorated the Venezuelan Guyana Esequibo 50 years of the Geneva Agreement yesterday evening. The event was held to bring clarity to the ongoing border dispute between the two South American countries. Venezuelan Ambassador to SVG, His Excellency Yuri Pimentel, stated that Venezuela will continue to uphold the agreement that was made in the Geneva Treaty and says that his country hopes that all ongoing issues will be dealt with as stipulated in the agreement. Ambassador Pimentel says that when Venezuela gained independence on July 5, 1811, they inherited all territories that belonged to the former Captaincy General with the Essequibo River as its western border. In 1966, the Geneva Agreement is signed a day like today, 17 of February, in which the governments of Venezuela, Britain, and the colony of British, British Guyana recognize the existence of a dispute over sovereignty on the Essequibo 
and procedures are established to find a solution by peaceful means. This treaty provides the legal foundation of the dispute. The agreement states that no acts or activities taking place while is, it is in force shall constitute a basis for asserting, supporting, or denying a claim to territorial sovereignty in the territories of Venezuela or the British Guyana, or create any right on sovereignty in these territories, save as such acts or activities are the result for many agreement reached by the Joint Committee and accepted in writing by the government of Venezuela and the government of Guyana. In reference to the most recent dispute, Ambassador Pimentel says that on this matter, Venezuela only recognizes the interventions of the Secretary General of the United Nations as legitimate in accordance with the Geneva Agreement to pave consensual, peaceful and political means with a view to resolving the dispute. He is hoping the UN will provide a healthy, logical and acceptable determination based on what he described as a sensitive issue. Of the latest violations of the Geneva Agreement, in 2012, Guyana requested to the United Nations unilaterally and without consultation the extension of the outer limits of the continent shelf and the action, an action which Venezuela protested because the maritime area is still an area to be defined. In 2013, we have another. We had another situation on October 10th, an incident with a, a vessel. Uh, when the vessel ventures into, it, it was a Guyanese vessel that ventures into territorial waters of Venezuela. Uh, Venezuela was protesting last year because we weren't informed, and uh, there wasn't a permission from part of Venezuela to explore uh, oil camps in uh, in this area of uh, of dispute. Go ahead. No, no, antes. Despite the warning on March 5th, Guyana installs an offshore oil rig on the seafront of the Esequibo territory. After this claim, the Bolivarian government presents several protests to the Guyanese government due to the authorization of foreign corporations to explore in the disputed area in order to exploit the natural resources, mainly oil and minerals. Ambassador Pimento further outlined that since the beginning of the Bolivarian Revolution, led by Commander Hugo Chavez in 1999, Venezuela has demonstrated with practical fact their solidarity with all the people of the world, especially in Latin America and the Caribbean. He says Venezuela has also championed the fight against imperialism that seeks to arrest sovereignty and that it is precisely for this anti-imperialism position that the historical dispute with Guyana is being exploited by foreign interests to generate disinformation campaign against Venezuela and its president, Nicolas Maduro. Additionally, the Venezuelan ambassador said there is no contradiction in their historical claim which dates back to more than a century. We want the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to know that neither our people nor our government want to have any conflict with our brothers of Guyana. Our way is that of friendship and integration, always guided by a diplomacy of peace. Venezuela in no case has committed acts of aggression or invasion of territories of other states, not Guyana and not any other country. And we should always remember that the army commanded by the liberator Simon Bolivar liberated six nations. He never conquered, he only gave freedom. Venezuela, attached to the legality symbolizing the Geneva Agreement of 1966, seeks to solve the territorial dispute representing the British seizure of its territory. Venezuela is absolutely certain that Guyana, in the advent of its independence, coincidentally at the time of the subscribing of the Geneva Agreement, accepted the conclusions subscribed by the United Kingdom with respect to that treaty. In fact, in the final rules of the agreement, you can read it, it is thus expressed. Too many of the nation's youths are falling through the cracks as a result of the use of drugs and alcohol, as well as sexual activities that are being propelled by the vulgar and violent music that they are being exposed to. In his feature address to the student body and members of the community at the launch of the George Stevens Secondary School 2016 Young Leaders Project, journalist Kenville Horn and recipient of the Queen's Young Leaders Award, 
told the students that they have a responsibility to society to have a positive impact and to effect meaningful change. He says, as a young leader, one can make a difference at home within his or her community, country, and in some cases, throughout the region by maximizing their full potential. The theme for this year's Young Leaders Program is Me, You, We, a shared vision for a brighter society. In referring to the sub-theme that the school has chosen, changing to enhance a brighter future from the perspective of something called personal development. Horn says it aids in moving the thought of individuality to encompass the wider community. The journalists further cautioned the students against indulgence in sexual activities, drugs, and alcohol, since it can hinder one's ability to make a valuable contribution to society. The project that you will be able to embark upon must always reflect the overall objective of helping others to realize a better future. This is a book only and young must play a role in this regard. Since it is important for the older and more experienced one, who will be helping to create a better future for all. At your current stage in life, the use of drugs and the abuse of alcohol, sexual activities will have an impact on your personal development. For example, many of our youths are abusing drugs and alcohol. These substances in turn affect the way your mind and body works. Hence, they are not really able to contribute meaningfully to their communities and in many instances they become users of society. I'm not saying that we have to do that. The Queen's Young Leader Award also highlighted the importance of keeping up a good personal appearance. He also urged the students not to give in to current trends or peer pressure so that they can feel good about themselves but to invest in all their energy that is to invest all their energy and focus into their schoolwork because having a good education is what can change situations in life while creating stronger, more confident individuals. Whether it's a leader, social leader, or individual leader, and I know there are many students who would say if this man is not being caught, I'm not going to do it, right? Okay. But these things are actually hindering hindrances towards your personal development and act as a cloud, preventing your life to enable a brighter future. Therefore, from our I realize that your outlook appearance helps a person to develop a perception of you. I want you to listen carefully. I realize that it does not matter the school. What matters is the amount of time you put into your school work and your attitude in class, including your attitude towards your teacher. That will define how sex successful you will be in school. Addressing the present-day acceptance and in some cases praise of teenage mothers, Horn says that students must strive to stay in school and to avoid engaging in sexual activity at an early age. He says that if as a teenager one is to develop him or herself and their community, the goal is to gain as much knowledge at school as possible. He is encouraging the students to let this be included in their message. And this is the thing that affects a lot of us as poor uh, and the poor people or persons coming from a less than privileged background. We tend to get distracted and instead of focusing on what we are to be focusing on, we decide that we are going to have a child. When you have a child, you become somebody else because you cannot focus on yourself anymore. You cannot focus on developing who you want to be. You have to focus on that child. You might have to go and look for a job because that child needs support. Why don't you just develop yourself? Why don't you just try and own something in life so that when you have that child, you can provide them with the necessary financial, moral, and spiritual support? 
If you know you have a child, then that child will be able to help somebody else. And you will realize that the dream of a brighter future can be achieved. Meanwhile, the principal of the school, Dr. George Bristol, expressed his pleasure at the theme the school's young leaders have selected to focus on for this year. He told the students that change is to start with them before they can go out into the communities to spread their message, adding that for change to take place in SVG, everyone has to understand that change can help to bring about a brighter, healthier, more prosperous future. Your people, you can. And you're thinking about it because you want to change life for better. You want to illuminate the future. You want to make it brighter. You want to be inclusive. You want everybody to be on board. And if you're going to change everybody, you must change yourself. Change yourself for the better. The way you think about yourself must improve. The way you see value in yourself must improve. And if you can do that, you'll be setting examples for others to follow. I want to wish you all the best. I want to thank you for taking this project on. I want to thank your teachers for working with you. I want you to give yourself a good hand as you go forward. Here now are highlights of some of the performances by the students of the George Stevens Secondary School at the launch of their 2016 Young Leaders Project. Why are you calling the child book take? Miss Emily, she didn't have a book book book. She didn't have a book for a book. She didn't have a book for a book. She didn't have a book for a book. If you are going to say, Miss Emily, you're not going to say, 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 you're like you for giving me strength the way you do for lifting me up when I'm feeling down and putting a smile on my face when I wear my frog thanks for being there and helping each other as one well. that is true friendship thank you for this and feeling and feeling and for us and thank you you said jobs you have a professional partner can provide you a service and it's all for us but I'm here to tell you that you are special and you deserve the best out of life. You can be confident and you yourself in a more positive way. You need to believe in yourself and do what is right to achieve all your goals. Having courage does not mean that you are afraid. Having courage and show encouragement you face your fears. Be able to say, I have fallen, but I will get up. Don't be afraid, have courage, thank you. Deputy Leader of the SVG Green Party, Cadmel McPhee, is calling for a swifter response from the police in catching the predator who viciously assaulted three women here in recent times. McPhee has expressed empathy to the victims and their families. He challenged the police to utilize their intelligence to catch the predator soonest, noting that he could be planning to do more harm to other women and girls. On behalf of the SVG Green Party, I highly um, emphasize again on those women that have been assaulted in the last recent days. Um, I am personally calling on the Commissioner of Police here to hunt down these um, thugs. We want to see a manhunt that is relentless um, to see the police being parked up in Montrose Police Station. It's a joke to see the police uh, just hanging around doing nothing. It's a joke. We, the SVG Green Party, is calling for the Commission of Police to drive to deliver a major manhunt to find this predator. We want to send a message out there that predators who go out there assaulting women will be hunted down severely. We are calling on the Commission of Police to deliver a manhunt to find this predator and to set a deadline for 48 hours where this predator will be in the hands of the police. The former British Army war veteran believes that sexual abuse and assault can traumatize women folk in this country, which he believes can have long-term effects on the way they function in society. Every time a rape is committed, the society is destroyed. It destroys the family. If your wife is raped, it destroys the family. If your daughter is raped, it destroys her life. Um, when a rape is committed, it destroys that person psychologically and it destroys society itself. So 
this is an impact that is a lifelong impact we're dealing with here and we have to make every single effort to ensure that the message that we're sending out there in this country is that we will not tolerate a haven for rapists in this country and where someone is alleged of having committed rape in this country that the system will stay a course hard and fast in us to ensure that justice ex exercise within its full entirety there is no short corners there is no u-turns there is no sum of the way and pull out jack out the suit it has to go all of the way and superintendent of police ruth jacobs of the criminal investigation department is urging women to take the necessary precaution for their safety speaking to svg tv news today on the recent incidents superintendent <coughs> i beg your pardon speaking to svg tv news today on the recent incidents superintendent jacob says women need to be careful on the streets and be smart about their safety under the eighth between three o'clock and by nine o'clock we had three attacks on three separate females and the description given by each female is the same so we know in which direction we are going there is a a voice note that is going around i heard it myself and it is pointing to a specific person calling the name of a person i want to let the public know that they have to be extremely careful in doing this because we had that person in our custody as one of our suspects and we did everything that we are supposed to do to ensure whether that was a person or not and he was discharged from our care hence we are still investigating investigating the matter so i'm asking the public to be very careful i want to say that as the head of cid and as a woman i strongly condemn the attack on our female i condemn it in the strongest term and I just want to encourage all the females in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to ensure that when you, you're walking, that you walk in pairs. You don't put yourself in um, situations like in situations in dark places because sometimes I pass and I might see a lady on the phone, down in the phone, not even holding up her head to see what is happening around. You have to be vigilant, know what is happening around you and ensure that you walk in dark places with someone else and make sure that you protect yourself. With investigations ongoing into the incident, Superintendent Jacobs urges anyone who has information into the attacks or on the perpetrator not to withhold it from the police as it may help to prevent future attacks. She says the police force is doing everything it can to find the perpetrator. What we do, we are soliciting information from the public and we are asking the public to come forward with any information that you may have to assist us. What we're doing from the police point of view, we are making sure that we gather intelligence and we are stepping up on our patrol. We have patrols day and night and we have other intelligence that we are working on to ensure that we, 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 we catch this person. But we are investigating the matter. We are doing everything. We are working assiduously to ensure that that, that person is caught. 39-year-old Franklin Davis, a carpenter of South Union, is now before the court on three separate charges of unlawful and malicious wounding. Assault with intent to commit the offense of wounding on police constables Jeremy Roberts and Isron Brown at South Rivers on February 15, 2016. Roberts sustained cutlass wounds to the head and face and had to seek medical attention at the Bible Health Center. Reports are that Davis was a suspect in a report of burglary and as a result the police went in search of him. When approached by the police, Davis inflicted cutlass wounds to Constable Roberts' head and face. Davis appeared at the serious offenses court earlier today before Chief Magistrate Rayshon Brown and pleaded not guilty to the charges. The police prosecutor had no objection to his bail, which was allowed in the sum of $3,500 with one surety and also to report to the Bible police station every Monday between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. The matter has been adjourned and transferred to the Bible Magistrate Court for trial on February 26, 2016. And residents of Sion Hill Rockies and the surrounding areas are calling on the relevant authorities to put permanent security in place at the Sion Hill Health Center 
to curb the spate of burglaries that have been ongoing for the past several months. The call has come in the wake of a recent burglary, which is said to have occurred over the weekend. Reports are that on Friday, February 12th, after work, personnel from the health center secured the building, and upon their return to the facility on Monday, February 15th, it was discovered that the building was broken into. After several checks, it was further discovered that a quantity of medicines, along with a transformer, were missing. The cost of the items is not yet known. It is reported that between November 2015, a total of 10 burglaries have occurred at the facility. When a source at the Criminal Investigation Department was contacted, he reported that investigations are being carried out into the matter.